services from supplier to customer within the business world supply chain operations encompasses many interconnected activities and functions such as procurement logistics inventory planning order fulfillment and manufacturing touching almost every industry it is crucial for areas like customer service reduction of production cost and improvement of product quality to discuss the importance of such a function and its future opportunities mba it kanpur is excited to host mr umakant nair for the 27th episode of the kaleidoscope to share his views on the topic resilient supply chain as a future career mr nair has over 25 years of experience and has shown phenomenal leadership abilities in supply management operations and manufacturing with a demonstrated history of working in electrical agricultural automobile and service industries he is skilled in strategic planning people leadership flawless operations management technology adoption digital supply chain value stream mapping and innovation with this i would like to welcome umakan sir to share his words on the same sir the virtual stage is all yours thank you thank you bharadwaj saswat parvez uh, bonnie and anshul thank you sir so, let me share it and then i'll uh, okay good afternoon i hope uh, you can see my screen and uh, there is no obstacle over there so it's all clear yes, for you yes yes sir perfect because i wanted to keep the right side for myself so that i can see some of you so that's important and then someone can also help me as we move to through the discussion uh, and i want to keep it open in terms of chats and maybe you can stop in between and if you can help me out if there is any question so i can definitely pick it up and then towards the end it will be more exciting to have that interaction and learning okay so good morning uh, to all of you let me see uh, the full audience here so good morning <clears throat> Good morning. Morning, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. 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 possibilities like uh, possibilities are something which we should be always talking about so that's something what we'll talk uh, please do not expect a lot of company data and articulation because that's important to all of you to know and understand that company data is more confidential so i'll not talk about more of company data <clears throat> makes sense so very quickly on myself uh, so uh, i'm uma uma kan nair you can uh, call me as uma So, 25th year in my professional uh, learning curve. Uh, so, as Anshul mentioned uh, and the team mentioned, supply management, uh, operation, logistics, manufacturing, new product introduction, and uh, quality. That's my core area. But out of all, what I really love uh, is supply chain uh, operations, and that's what I would be talking about. Cummins, Eaton, and John Deere. These are the three companies where I've been, uh, and I'll talk a bit more about that when I get into the next slide. uh again i love uh, staying connected with industry as you can see the middle belt and uh, i love fun and learning and i also love to contribute to the society the best what i can do uh then these are our my teams uh, at at many times i've got an opportunity to connect with this fantastic team so we believe in um, trust which is really important and then valuing every individual and taking care of what is important from business and people so 
Uh, proud to be associated with Indian Institute of Management Lucknow there and Symbiosis and a lot of learning. So recently I've completed I am Lucknow. Uh, that's more of a strategic leadership program what they had SLP. So it was very good uh, to be there. Quickly on to my own journey, folks, and all of you are already work uh, or you have working experience, but I just want to share that where I met supply chain management, which is really important. My first 10 years, I was more into manufacturing operations, but that's where I met uh, procurement as an opportunity, like understanding the procurement needs. That was more of uh, how do we buy things? So it was more of my own learnings. I was not into the direct role, but I used to get that glimpses that that used to excite me at that point in time and then i got more opportunities again since i was having experience in manufacturing i got into eaton there i was able to learn more and more operations uh, then i moved on to uh, john deere there i got more opportunities to learn supply chain quality and digital supply chain was one area where uh, the team was starting to work upon and today i'm in global supply chain center of excellence back to eaton uh, a great company and here we are focusing on the supply chain operations, digital supply chain, and so on and so forth. So a great journey over there. <clears throat> Quickly moving on to uh, Eaton, uh, but at, at the top level, this is already available in, 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 the, in the Google, or you can go search and see Eaton website. You'll be able to see who we are. Um, to start with, we make what matters work, and that is something which is really core and important for us from a business standpoint as well as people standpoint. When I say people, it is more of our stakeholders, customers, suppliers, and all of our employees. We are uh, focused to be an intelligent power management company. Uh, so earlier till the late 2016, the focus was power management company, and now we are shifting or already started shifting into the intelligent power management portfolio. What does that mean? So to be uh, clear and open that we are not uh, we are not creating any kind of power, and uh, it is more of that power management companies, and uh, between that power management companies and then an overall execution, the safety side of is what what we take care of, like on demand or, or energy, or maybe the overall infrastructure and buildings work. So if I can take a quick example that if within your home also, there will be a lot of safety system which is avail available to ensure that all your electrical systems are working pro appropriately. If there is uh, uh, any challenges from an electrical uh, standpoint, any short circuit, anything, uh, it will first impact on those safety system than your entire home, correct? And that's becoming important, more and more important for sure in, 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 in the developed countries. And also in India also, it's consistently getting to that mode. So that's something really important. We focus over there. And towards uh, bottom, you can see two major areas, electrical and industrial. These are the two sectors where we work upon. Electrical, as I mentioned, all the electrical uh, equipment, support from a safety uh, standpoint and energy focused area and industrial is more of transmission um, aerospace uh, energy as well as when you get into the uh, the transmission c mobility so that's where we focus upon very diversified in business as you can see over here and it's more people focused and then growth and digital driven when i say growth and digital driven we have fo our focus is more on getting the right businesses so that we can support our stakeholders in an effective way and digital driven when we say that that's important for any company so we've been focusing on this from last many years and there is an acceleration which is happening which is spreading all the functions together so that we can support our customer in an effective way last but not the least this is very important that all the activities what we are focusing is more on the sustainability side of it so the future is uh, sustainability for any company we have to focus on that and our uh, our values are more driven through sustainability so that's that's where we have consistent focus on sustainability every quarter we have the results for sustainability how are we supporting the sustainability both from manufacturing side of it, supply chain side of it, holistically as a company over there. <clears throat> okay. Now, supply chain has changed. Uh, and this is, this is not something which is a news for anybody. And I'm sure that many of you would have that connect or maybe you have already known to this fact that the supply chain, what we used to have in the past versus the supply chain, which is today is, is completely shifted. 
and the future is here. That's how I uh, believe and why and how. So let's have those uh, discussion or maybe if you someone want to share uh, your insights, why do you think that supply chain have changed? Uh, you can uh, put it on chat as well. Uh, if you believe supply chain has changed, why do you think that supply chain has changed? You can use chat as well, or you can talk as well. Anshul, I hope that's okay. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. And nothing is right and wrong. Don't worry about it. It's a learning. Okay, so... Okay, uh, online retail e-commerce has kind of uh, changed the conventional methods. Yeah, that's a good one, uh, Parvez, over there. Supply chain has changed due to innovation and technology. And yeah, that's good. Technological advancement, you're right. Yeah. But what's the need? Why, why the change is coming? Incorporation of new technology and ERP. Why are we doing this? Why, why the technology and all the pieces are coming? Supply chain is just to bring parts, correct? Changes in lifestyle, okay, that's good. Yeah, good input. So, so there are some more factors which actually triggered or are, are rather pushing the supply chain to think differently. I'll pick this uh, quickly. Uh, the business rules uh, have changed. When I say business rules, uh, some of you will have this knowledge who, who might have worked in manufacturing supply chain or maybe in consultancy as well. Um, the the focus was more on um, the, the manufacturing side, which is really good. But at the same time, what happens is the supply chain goes to the last leg, correct? Now it has changed. It, it is more becoming uh, a four wall theme. Like you, you cannot focus only on the part availability. You need to understand the complete chain. Um, the competition is going up. Everybody is looking at the same suppliers and the challenges are increasing in every category. And in some language, it is more of commodities, correct? Winning in the VUCA world, and how many of you have heard about VUCA world? Uh, and I'm sure that you have. Uh, and I have I heard about VUCA long back. And believe me, I didn't have any clue about this VUCA at that point in time. So for sure, the words were pretty clear. And you can just add on to comment uh, for people's uh, or uh, anybody's uh, understanding of what is VUCA. But at the same time, uh, during pandemic, people were able to understand what is VUCA. All the challenges, what we have gone through, or all the after effect on uh, COVID is something what I will say, which is VUCA. It has brought in a lot of challenges on the logistics front, supply chain front, even for that matter, on people side of it, the way we are operating, the way we are connecting, all things have changed. In order to stay competitive and connected, supply chain is going to play a key role. So that's where that winning in the UCA world is really important, folks. And that's many of you mentioned here. Let me go back to the chat here. So almost uh, all of you have talked about that digital supply chain or the technology is key to success and your spot on that area. Uh, it's, it's, it's shifting the gears. Uh, when we talk about the e-commerce journey, which was the first one, which was uh, mentioned about, it's changing. And, it, and earlier people used to say, no, it is easy for uh, those kind of businesses, startups, it's easy. But for larger corporates where we, have, we are manufacturing, it's not easy. No, it's not uh, that difficult if you have that structured process we have the right people and people process and tool. That's what we also believe at Eaton that uh, we can uh, transform the journey over there. Last point, which is really important, which is more of an investment from all of us, especially I am able to connect with all of you. And then you are also uh, in, in within your mid term or mid career, you are moving from your uh, settled jobs to uh, learning curve that is showing that that things are changing and we need to be prepared in terms of developing the next generation leadership to manage this change uh i'll get a bit deep into the uh, operational business challenges and 
when you look at supply chain uh, there are external challenges which which we need to manage as supply chain professionals and then we also have internal first we'll talk about external uh, it it used to be beyond our reach but still the data is important why do i say that like almost all supply chain professional uh, it, it the the supply chain is more from a relationship management perspective. So how do you build relationship with the suppliers? How do you relation, build the relationship with the partners? That defined the success of supply chain in the earlier days. Now it is more shifting towards the data and technology side of it. So for an example, for a, as an example, we still have issues from a, um, chips, electronic parts, shortages, supply issues. And I'm sure that all of you would know this. Uh, when it actually hit, uh, hit us during uh, pandemic, it, that was not manageable for any company because all the folks, all the companies, all industries was focusing on the same area, same supplier, same region, correct? Now, what's happening is that do you have that right level of people, processes, and tools where you will be able to react immediately uh, according to the system? The, the chips which we used to get in uh, say 20 days and now just taking around 50 weeks, correct? So how fast you are changing your lead time uh, planning? How are you taking that as the right uh, methods to correct your processes? That's really important. And you cannot sit back and say that, no, 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 this is a supply chain issue. And if you are not getting, that's a supply chain problem. No, we need to react. We need to react, but at the same time, you need to set the right processes and then you need to bring in more supply chain resilience or the supply chain resilience means. Like if you talk about chips and electronic parts, uh, most of the companies have more Southeast Asia as a center. Uh, that's where like if you talk about Taiwan or all those uh, critical supplies are based out of that place. Is it an opportunity for any other country to make sure that the strategic supply chain is planned so that you're not losing on the competitive advantage. That's key. And that's where data is really important. Container shortages, you might have heard about Swiss Canal issue. Those are the challenges which, which is really out of hack, correct? And you don't know that such kind of instance, instances happen. If that happen, what will happen? Commodity fluctuation. Uh, in, in the entire last two years, uh, any supply chain professional, it was more of a tough time in terms of negotiation. It's not easy to negotiate, uh, even if you have data, because uh, all the commodities were going up, 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 and up, and it was more of every other uh, quarter. Your supplier will come back to you and say that, okay, I have an additional check or need uh, from a price increase perspective and you don't have an opportunity. But at the same time, as it goes down, how are you uh, getting into the data and then collaboratively working with your partners to get that uh, back and then make sure that your overall cost is good and your place competitive in the journey. <clears throat> country to country trade issues. Again, all of you would know this, China, US, trade wars, uh, some on also on India. And when the, when the, when the, com the uh, different countries are behaving more from uh, creating four walls around them is going to challenge because that free economy, open economy has given us that opportunity to trade uh, between countries very easily. And all of a sudden putting walls will have significant challenges. I understand the, the specific country related uh, uh, focus on make or made, that is important. But at the same time, we need to understand the holistic global opportunities so that where which category is made where and uh, to be made where and then how it is going to help us effectively in terms of total cost of ownership or total landed cost that's really important supply base to support changing manufacturing needs and that's also connecting to the uh, earlier one like not focusing on everything on southeast asia or maybe china or maybe india but at the same time you have to have that right level of balance so that you're getting all the parts at the right time, at the right cost, and then you're able to push that to your customer with the right quality so that you're, you're in the competition consistently. And if you don't uh, proactively plan this, you'll be out of the business. So that's important uh, when you focus on the external side. Let's get into the internal side. And this is something which is really important for any company. Um, now, when we, wherever you work or wherever you will work, you need to understand this is in our hands. But many times what you'll so see or look uh, do is that we'll not focus on this. 
this is within reach and the data drives here legacy system so any companies uh, if you are having um, um, so organic growth if you might have heard about it that is where you have a single erp system you're consistently growing in, in in the same direction with same erps or same investment technology but when you have inorganic growth where the other companies uh, and uh, mergers and acquisition happens then you don't have that um, opportunity over there to say that okay no no we are not going to we are going to change the complete system today because we have to bring in the right business and we have to bring in the right revenue stream in there you will have those challenges in terms of having this entire data into one uh, layer and then give you the right insights so that you don't need to be reactive you can be proactive and that's where that lack of central data repository uh, is coming in and that's where the focus is needs to be there for any company now if we need to do that we need internal skills and this is important for each one of you to understand that's the skills what each one of you might be developing already and if you're developing within your uh, uh, work uh, within your um, institution which is good but at the same time also develop outside as well small courses understand small problem statement and i really and uh, i was really happy to see the capstone project focus what you guys have mentioned over there especially uh, some insights on data analytics it electronics and you also sh uh, shared about one of the company hero capstone project and we'll definitely uh, discuss about that what are the opportunities for us to collaborate in this area as well, because that's really important any corporate companies should ask these questions to self now this is for us which we have done in a in in or which we do on a regular uh, basis does our organization understand supply chain operation challenges and it needs holistically so whatever i have shared with all of you like um, are you looking at supply chain as the last leg and then operation inside the four wall or do you understand it holistically second Organization, does the organization understand the people, skill set, and technology needs? Many of you mentioned in the chat that supply chain is technology, or we need to focus on the digital, digital side, excuse me. Now, I have a current skill set, which we call of, uh, uh, call as a uh, foundational skill set, correct? So you talk about materials planning, you have the planning uh, capabilities, you have the buyer rule capabilities, you know how to manage the inventory, you know how to manage the logistics, uh, you know how to manage the supply quality. So these are the pieces which are really important from a current skill set stand, which, which is important because without that, we will not be able to manage. But at the same time, you also need to understand what kind of technology skill set. If you talk about AI, ML, all those pieces will give you that complement to enhance the journey much faster. And that's not going to be only internal, but we all also have the partnership outside. So that's more important. Last but not the least, does the leadership understand uh, above and committed to this priority? So maybe anybody like me or even beyond all the top levels. So at our company, I can definitely say that for leadership understand this importance and then committed to this priority. So these are the three elements. Uh, any company, wherever you go, Wherever you get that opportunity, you should always understand how the company uh, focus on this channel. <clears throat> is it readiness or uh, no choice now? All of us know there is no choice today. If you are not ready, get ready. If you're ready, go ahead. I'm moving on to the next slide, uh, folks. And this is more of, again, uh, my experience or my understanding, learning. And many of you might have worked in this entire stream over there. In traditional way, uh, when I started my journey, or when, when many of you might have uh, joined the companies, the focus was only on the four walls to start with, like the lean manufacturing concept. Like if you talk about a uh, production system, if you talk about total productive maintenance, TPM, you might have heard about it. All of them was, uh, was focused more on the lean manufacturing side. At, at many a times, it used to also focus the other side, but it was coming into the close uh, four walls theory because it is more manageable. I can manage this. I, once the parts arrive, I can manufacture it much faster and then send it. So that was the major focus over there. So that's where it was more of design and operate. So you design the part, you operate it, and then you deliver. 
the change which is more coming in or uh, that's where i am really excited and this that's where i see that is the right time to be in this profession that's into end supply chain is you you getting this complete opportunity to thread the story effectively and that's where supply chain is coming to the forefront anything which is happening within the four wall supply chain has a say to it because you are giving the part at the right time at the right uh, uh, quality quantity to the point of use but at the same time you look at the left 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 side over there like planning production planning sales operation planning and then demand planning so this entire leg you will not find any place where supply chain is not there and that has to be strategic and that will have lot of focus in terms of technology and then people how do you develop people in the right direction that's where i would say that that all those technologies what we are talking about it will play a vital role or is already playing a vital role irrespective of any kind of industry whether you are electrical agricultural um it to be anything everywhere it will be playing the vital role but the challenge always for any company is that we tend to believe that the manufacturing operation and operations are two different things or it is like manufacturing only starts or operation only starts once a part uh, arrive at the point of use no it that's where this collaboration needs to come much more effectively you have seen this uh, disruption which i was talking about and then at the same time you this these things you may not be able to predict but you always need to have some kind of plans in place like on the center what you can see is more of our own understanding to look at okay now i have uh, some of the orders which is available i don't have the, those parts available maybe it is on the container maybe it is on the ship maybe it is on the road but what are the parts which i have at this point in time as available and what is my customer requirement or uh, sales requirement can i convince my uh, customer that what is available with me how much fast i can respond to a different model uh, which will support their uh, needs and then maybe work together and then partner for that right level of uh, transformation over there it's important and it is more of trying to solve things rather than trying to solve things on stand alone we have to collaborate as sales and marketing or maybe uh, uh, engineering as well as supply chain so that's where that overall holistic understanding comes <clears throat> little bit uh, about uh, supply chain again and you can stop me at any point i'm anshu for any questions or you guys can add there and i'll definitely answer that okay and this is again uh, might be known to many of you uh, already and uh, but this is important for any industry to understand that it is the facts which are driving the automobile as well as construction industries uh, especially in the manufacturing and supply chain that we are changing uh, now more into electrical application hybrid yeah which is there but electric applications uh, is something where we are leading how many of you have electric uh, scooters anybody nobody all like the uh, the like the high cc vehicles i believe so nobody will have that any anybody is having uh, cars electric electric cars or thinking about uh, electric cars and why do you want that kind of a uh, vehicle if you want uh, sir uh, we had like one easy in plan and the primary reason was to price it better uh huh yeah that's a good one yeah that's correct it's it's important and also you are contributing towards the society as well it, it, it's going to take a good long time here in uh, india but at the same time last two years you might have seen uh, pervez that it's increasing like every uh, society you will see that there is a charging station and the opportunities are going up and up and if you look at india as an industry this is the place where more and more investment will be coming in correct so uh, i mentioned yes. this 40% penetration i believe it will go even beyond that with all what our uh, government especially uh, the uh, the ministry of uh, road and road safety and transportation is working on a lot of things diesel will remain uh, because it is uh, important for the commercial side and that will remain for uh, some time for sure and all this will be focused on the uh, 
electrical side because um, the potential drivers, I would say that, and these are my thought process only, like when you talk about power train complexities is increasing, correct? Like uh, if those of you who are in supply chain, you'll understand this. Every year we need to have this consistent focus on improving efficiency, uh, cost reduction. This comes in on a regular basis. Uh, but you cannot uh, compromise on your quality. Like nobody would love to have any challenges, any noise on your own uh, vehicle transmission, correct? You need to have that smooth feeling when you get into a car. If, if that is a challenge, then you say, oh, no, no, there is a problem, or you'll have all issues. And that's where the changes are also important, correct? And it will definitely change uh, soon in multiple other countries or already changed. So I was in US, I was able to see that many of the cars and you, the cars will pass by, you will not be able to understand that some, something gone yes. through your left or right. So it, it's changing there. And then it is time that the timing between OEMs and suppliers for positioning it as a key success. India, it's happening. Last two years, it's happening much faster because all those tier two, tier three suppliers, um, they also realize much faster that the Tatas, the Mahindras, all those um, the bigger companies and all those which are coming in uh, as MNC, which is coming in from uh, outside, they're all focusing on this area. So they are also changing their pace in this direction, which is really helping. Uh, the next piece, which is more important, is that if, if we focus on all this area, now, does it also impact the supply chain the way we are working today, the way we are working today? So if you had that experience of procurement at some point in time, some of you, ultimately, procurement will be uh, going or pro procurement will be transforming into smaller activities, but giving that uh, transformational technology uh, related opportunities over there. So how do I say that? Like if you see this, today if I look at my procurement or even yesterday uh, during my days, if I have 100 tasks, let me put the pointer right here. I'm, I'm sure that you're able to see here. 100 tasks, yeah, if I have 100 tasks, I need 100 resources, just as an example, making up. But that was more of everybody was focused on tasks, everybody was focused on suppliers, and that's more changing from an automation standpoint. The large part of operational tactical things are changing into small, small technology uh, tasks. If you have heard about the uh, bots here, and bots are now helping into planning as well, correct? And that is bringing in more efficiency to supply chain and procurement. What that means, those 100 tasks, which I used to have yesterday is going to be like 25. And when I say 25, even I don't need 25 resources, that's going to be much lesser than. This is tactical what I'm talking about. So don't take me wrong in terms of the job opportunities will be less. No job opportunities will be going much higher. Because this piece, which is which you can see as coming down or empty right here, this needs a lot of efforts and transformation in every company, every industry, including culture, including changing people, including changing the current process. This is not easy from here to here. That's where each one of you can play a vital role. That's where you need to develop. That's where we all can work together to transform the company. So the way we were planning, Earlier, supply planning is going to completely change. You will have those control towers, which you might have seen in Hollywood movies and all that. You can see some Bonds, James Bond movies. You must have seen that. Where is a, 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 a particular, uh, I won't say customer, but a, a, a thief or somebody. But in our case, it's going to change completely. So that's where we should be focusing upon. That's where we are going from a control tower as well as a digital standpoint. Hope you're able to understand this uh, analogy over there. Now look into this one. It is, is it an opportunity again for Asian India? How oh, 100%, 100%, because we are, uh, I mean, within India specifically, we have the largest talent base, the largest uh, single, uh, single economy, which is growing, but at the same time focusing on talent development, skills development is India. Proud to be a part of that. 
Now, at the same time, when you look at uh, your own institutions, the, the insights what you guys have given me, those are in the right direction where you guys are learning things which will be uh, useful for uh, companies uh, and industries to improve their overall efficiencies. At the same time, we need to continue the collaboration. You mentioned about Capstone, that's the right level of collaboration. So even before you get an opportunity to be in a company, you're able to learn, understand what the company is doing, but at, this, at the same time, get an opportunity to collaborate and position yourself for the future, correct? <clears throat> And then technology and investment in organizations continues. Internal investment, like in my company, like we have consistent invest, uh, investment on our own people who have joined in. Like every year we uh, position our team members for learning technology uh, and uh, digital skill set, working closely with uh, industry partners as well as institutions. So the, for that, they don't completely go out of uh, their working zone, but they get the right time uh, we have Theories like 70, 20, 10, so you might have heard about you. 70 is more of their on job. 20% is more of they get connected to the mentors or uh, people who can train them effectively. 10% is more of investing on the technology learning and all that. Speed and agility to respond world market needs. That's really important. So that's where that transformation is coming in for us. And then question to address uh, in, in, during these current challenges, again, unique opportunities for uh, ahead of us. Like just more of practical, as I mentioned folks uh, earlier, that we used to run behind parts. Uh, like I, I, I know that uh, in my days, I used to chase parts. When I say chase parts, I used to call suppliers um, 10 times to get one part. And uh, there used to be limited visibility, if I can say so. Like, um, and the dependency used to be high with uh, somebody like a truck driver and I used to call them and say, okay, where are you? I'm in Pune. So somebody would be saying that, okay, I'm uh, 60 kilometers away from Pune. And then I would have all those right communication back to the operation in terms of, okay, get ready. Your scheduling can be right in this way. The parts are coming in. And then believe me, the part doesn't show up because I don't have the real-time visibility over there. It's more of dependency. From there, it is now changing. The trends are changing more towards the technology. What you can see that it is right time, right place, right quantity and quality with that right level of visibility so that I can plan my overall uh, uh, operations effectively. And then last but not the least, we are moving into the revenue generation uh, model. The sub supply chain is more at the forefront now with revenue generation at the forefront. Efficiency plus value for organization and people. That's what supply chain is focusing upon. And don't want to repeat the digital mindset, which is really important. But every company, including ours, we, we should be focusing on, yes, let's fail fast, but don't fail to try consistently. So as an example, I can tell you within our organization, we have started um, a digital incubation lab, which is more focused on uh, trying things collaboratively than standalone by functions. All the functions come together. So we have a space where we talk about our uh, problem statements and challenges. And then we do quick POCs in collaborations with uh, in collaboration with some sometimes startup or sometimes with expert, and then try to so, uh, solve the problem much faster. Do we get uh, success every time? No, no, we don't need, uh, we don't get uh, success every time, but we get that real digital mindset, which will help us to stay competitive again. And then learn from industry. You don't need to reinvent the wheel uh, every time. You don't need to do everything inside. So that's the uh, mantra for success. So that was uh, quite about supply chain. Before I get into logistics, any questions? I'm taking a pause and then I can get into logistics. A couple of more slides over there. Okay. This you will hear about the same. Uh, very, if I talk about supply chain, as I mentioned, it was last leg. Logistics was not even in in anybody's mindset uh, during the earlier days. It was more of okay, if I can take uh, the finished good uh, distribution. If you guys understand finished good uh, uh, good di distribution. It used to be the last to last leg in any organization. So once everything is done, you will call a logistics uh, 
employee or the partner and say, hey, this is finished. Whether it is a tractor engine or it is, it is a construction equipment, whether it is a car, anything, electrical equipment, you'll say, okay, it is all set, ready. You know, you need to ship it. Now, the pain and agony for that logistics guy who might be an engineer is that he or she is doing the job after things are produced. The change what we need to now bring in is that we need to look at logistics as more of a design opportunity. Logistics needs to be designed. And that's what uh, each, each uh, industry have learned in, in the last uh, uh, two, two and a half years, uh, two, two, two and a half years because of COVID. Why do I say that? If you have seen one of my slides where I've mentioned about the container shortages, the network challenges, correct? You don't have this network operating or you have a challenge in terms of some blockages. What do we do in this kind of situation that you will optimize the container space and utilize maximum with what you have available? If you have to do that, you need to understand, your logistics guy need to understand what is that we are designing. If you're talking about a product, full product, take an example of a car. And if you're shipping that car from point A to point B international, I'm talking about the international logistics, if you look at it, how can you package it in the right way so that you're optimizing that overall footprint and utilizing it effectively rather than sending air in a container? Air is cost, correct? You will consistently send that. You will have challenges on your overall uh, balance sheet. So that's where these folks need to get in now, sit with the engineers. That's where the design for distribution and network simulation plays a vital role. Traditionally, it was outsourced, okay? People will come in and they do the designing and then distribute it by themselves, but we have a state to it because it's our product. As a company, it's our product. So we need to get in and see that what data says, how much of percentage of money what we are investing and can we do something by which we can improve our profitability and reduce this inefficiency within this overall logistics like so. A powerful area what uh, many companies are working, and I'm proud that we are also working on this area, which will help us to position better again. Okay, so again, the, as I close, I want to share you uh, quick insights, which I definitely take a lot of pride. Recently, I was in US and I was able to listen to uh, uh, one of the largest company, uh, uh, its CEO, uh, and he was presenting there and he was mentioning that during the COVID, uh, we've been very open in terms of uh, appreciating uh, our front-end workers as, as well as doctors, and they've done a fabulous job in terms of uh, helping us. Right? We all went through this bad uh, experience over there. But at the same time, one thing where we could have done a, a better job is, is supporting and um, encouraging our supply chain as well. And you, you should be able to understand that even if you were inside a home, your supply was not missing. I mean, initial days, I would understand that. But most of you have changed your way of uh, taking even groceries. All the things were coming at your doorsteps. That's supply chain, correct? Anything around us, like nature, is supply chain to make sure that your life is going easy. So that's where that gives us, especially me, uh, supply chain. I take immense pride to be in that uh, profession. It's not easy, but at the same time, uh, it's it's a humbling experience to be in that journey. Like when I uh, hear about the vaccinations done on time for all of India, multiple globe that gives a lot of pride because supply chain is involved in that. Digital supply chain investment in industry, uh, institutes and startups, this is going through an acceleration and revenue, we are revenue drivers. So understand that. So if you want to look at profession where you will be a uh, part of revenue, or you want to be part of revenue, this is the best place. Last but not least, we'll continuously invest on talent development and engagement. Whether it is in my company, you know that all the other industries over there and go and get maximum out of it. You need to develop consistently so that you can learn and uh, develop and contribute. 
So that I have that question again, resilient supply chain as a future career, as you, uh, are you excited? And you can, if you're excited, you can unmute and you can say yes. If you are not, you can also say no, that's absolutely fine. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very, excited. very excited very excited thank you that's all from my side folks uh, i will stop sharing and i would like to take questions or any inputs any other inputs or if you are not agreeing with my point uh, that will be a learning for me i can note down a few points from your side as well uh, so, guys if you have any questions please raise your question yeah raise your hands please Uh, Rahul, you can go ahead with your question. Yeah, sir, uh, you talked about um, challenges that are faced by uh, current supply chain managers. So I'd like to know what are the additional skills that are required, you know, for future supply chain managers who are venturing into this particular profession, like in a post-pandemic world, what are the additional skills that they require? Sure, Rahul, very good question. And... Being a holistic supply chain, and generally when I share it with my team as well, I would say that supply chain is not, you cannot be 100% in supply chain because the moment you think that you learn, you know everything, by the time supply chain changes, so behavior changes. Like I would say that I have around 50% of knowledge in supply chain. That's how I start. And one thing which is really important, Rahul, is uh, knowing finance is really important. And when you say finance, it is not that uh, everything in finance, but you need to understand how um, finance operates, or finance operations, uh, because finance operations has an, everything to do with supply chain. If you know that uh, in any company, the spend, money which we spend, is more on supply chain, because you need to buy things, correct? And then you keep those stuffs on floor, if you're not using it, that's the inventory. If you understand the days on hands and you, uh, how do you convert it much faster, correct? So that finance uh, piece is really important to understand better. So that's something which every uh, supply chain professional, including me, uh, should be learning so that then the life would be more easy because you will be able to understand. Then the data and technology is really important so that you become more holistic, uh, transformation, supply chain transformation agent. Otherwise, you will stay as a materials planning guy or maybe a procurement guy. The, the transformation is always with these three. Uh, so you need to understand the supply chain for sure. You need to understand finance and then you need to understand without digital. Not depth of digital, but yes, if it is good. Thanks. So much. Thanks. <laughs> Let's see Chiranjeev. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Uh, so my question is, uh, it is pretty evident from the repercussions due to uncertainties like the pandemic, which we have just witnessed, that uh, customers also have to adapt to the changes and not necessarily the companies offering the services. In such situations, uh, the demand of the customers uh, might change drastically over the course of time, and which might lead to a product which is vastly different from the one which was proposed uh, originally. So how do companies gauge this change effectively and how fast so that that specific firm can still remain the top tier supplier for that product? Perfect. And uh, yeah, let me note down that's a good question as well. So I mentioned about people process tools, uh, if you recall uh, Chiranjeev, if I can call you Chiranjeev. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Now, all these pieces which you mentioned are real, like it is the Tabuka world which I was talking about. Uh, sitting here, I'm, I'm just talking to you guys. I've kept my mobile survey, and I'm sure that there might be two, three more emails which have come, which is there from my uh, sales and operation team for sure. In terms of the those changes, what you are talking about. Now, the opportunity for us uh, in this kind of situation is always understand the holistic portfolio. What are we building and what is our customer expectation? And some few things which I have also learned uh, recently with our with, with my I am Lucknow experience is that the focus for supply chain or operations or any company is more now getting into understanding the customer demands and needs. At the same time, our sales and marketing, sales and uh, operations team, 
they also need to understand what we can propose as a solution, uh, even if your customer is asking for something. Because customer want things looking at uh, what is available in the market. Sometimes it is more of trend. Sometimes it is more of they have heard it from someone. Okay, you understand that uh, sales and marketing uh, theory is over there. But that's where this collaboration is really important. And then looking at our processes, how fast I can change my manufacturing internal manufacturing process to produce the right uh, uh, product and then ship it at the right uh, right best op opportunity to the uh, customer. Not easy, but at the same time, I can tell you that these are the struggles so what keeps me uh, personally on toe uh, because that's really important to understand and uh, that visibility side, which I was talking about, that's really important. So you need to understand your customer. You need to understand your data, what is available, what's not available. You need to understand your operational strength and they need to have that right level of relationship. I hope I was able to articulate, but it, it can have a good discussion uh, for sure to give you that right answer. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Siranjeev. Go ahead, Abhishek. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, my question is uh, like adverse events during the recent year, like COVID-19 or the Russia-Ukraine war, have they pushed the industry towards shorter supply chains or we are still planning to make our existing ones more resilient? It has pushed, uh, like two years, it was more of, uh, you know, every country was not going through the pandemic at the same time. If, if you... Uh, recall those days, Abhishek. Sometime China used to be locked. Sometime India used to be locked. And as India comes out, US getting into a lock. As US comes out, Europe getting into lock. So it was dynamic for all of us, correct? And then you think uh, uh, 10,000, 20,000 up situation for supply chain. Since all these countries or regions are not uh, getting into a lockdown situation at the same time, the supply chain was getting disturbed consistent, correct? Like I have manufactured the part, um, no challenges from my shipping lane side of it, I push it. But it goes to some other port and it is staying over there for ever from a congestion standpoint. Now that has created a lot of issues and we are still recovering from that situation. Or I would say that that's going away. COVID is gone. Uh, let's believe that it is gone. Uh, but at the same time, as you rightly mentioned, uh, that has given us the right uh, thinking ability that what we can do differently. One, I have a set supply chain, which is which is more earlier we used to think that economic source countries, if you have heard about that, okay, push all from a cost standpoint to some other countries, including India or any other uh, Southeast Asia or somewhere. Vis-a-vis, -vis, now we need to think about a real win-win situation. If I need something, a, a part to ensure that I am uh, building the uh, product and delivering it to customer, any, for that matter, any uh, country, we need to have that make in India practices, which you would know, correct, or make in any other uh, country. That's where that strategic sourcing split that from a total cost of ownership or total landed cost uh, uh, per se, whether it is 60, 40 from a strategic sourcing perspective or a 40, 60, so that you can manage this air, uh, ship, rail, all of this can be managed even we have a disaster, even we have some kind of challenges. So that consistency is there. That's where the thought process is now sh shifting. To uh, close or uh, to, to give you a clear answer, the resilient supply chain is now focused on both the side, your existing supplies, as well as possibly finding out the right new supplies Again, from getting the right cost, uh, right quality, but at the same time, find out what makes more impact on the total cost of production. Thanks, Thank sir. sir. I hope I was able to answer your question. Yeah. Thanks. Arvind? Morning, sir. Morning, Arvind. Uh, so my question is, how can the risks with supply chain be mitigated keeping the recent developments in them? Uh, it can be technological you know, the kind of geopolitical situations that are in the How can the risk be mitigated in that situation? Well, there are different uh, 
there could be different thoughts on risk uh, mitigation. In my perspective, risk cannot be 100% mitigated. You should be able to anticipate it on a regular basis. If your anticipation mechanism is not correct, uh, Arvind, then it is going to be a big risk. Then you are on the uh, extreme side where you are just sitting and you don't know what to do. So anticipation for anticipation, uh, for example, what we do, especially on the network optimization, which I was sharing, then what are the network channels available so that I can ship my uh, parts in the right containers so that I can reach my customers much faster. For that, I need to know the data. I need to have that visibility. So I cannot focus only on my four walls or only my four suppliers. You need to go out and see that what are the opportunities. Sometimes you need to work with your competitions as well, for example. Sometimes you need to work with industry experts as well. There you'll be able to see that how you can react, uh, how you can be, uh, how you can focus on the required uh, opportunities much faster. Rather than being reactive, you can be proactive about it. So that's where I, uh, that's how I will summarize, Arvind. Risk will be there but you should be able to anticipate very effectively and then you, you can position yourself better. The risk will be continuing. Thank you, sir. That answers my question. Thanks, Arvind. Soumya? Good morning, sir. Good morning. So my question is, how can supplier collaboration help supply chain deliver its full potential in terms of sustainability, resiliency, or transparency? That's a good question. And uh, supply collaboration is something what um, now we are also working upon. And supply collaboration is different. Uh, there are different elements in, involved in this. Um, when you see supply collaboration, supply can also be a part of my own innovation as well. Example, if supplier is, uh, I, I have some, I have a design and then we are just, my supplier is consistently building on uh, a part which I'm asking them to manufacture. There is an opportunity consistently where my suppliers as well as my team can collaborate uh, to improve the overall uh, design efficiency, manufacturing efficiency, and give it as a holistic product to end customer. And that's where this partnership comes. And you talked about sustainability. There also it is really important. So just as an example, like when you look at logistics, logistics is the space where you have maximum challenges in terms of uh, carbon footprint, if, uh, as you would know, because that's where any company will be having known or unknown uh, challenges in terms of contributing into the, uh, the carbon footprint side of it. Now, you can always partner with your suppliers and understand, okay, how, how can we have the right practices? If you understand the crosstalk opportunities, or collaborating with your, uh, sometime collaborating with your competitors, sometime collaborating with some of uh, other industry partners, but still utilizing the same uh, space which is available, which I was talking about, rather than shipping air, can I collaborate with some of the other industries and then ensure that you're sharing the space, but we are not, uh, we are not keeping it unutilized. So these pieces uh, can definitely uh, be looked into uh, through the right level of supplier collaboration. We are also encouraging more and more supplier collaboration with the right uh, level of integration, early integration with the suppliers. And, uh, as an example, uh, do they have the visibility of my system? What am I scheduling for next week? Then they can, they don't, they can, uh, proactively plan from their side. I don't need to send an email. I don't need to call them. So it, it's more of the best we can uh, from a transparency standpoint. Right? If there is nothing to lose over there. It is more of giving them that electronic visibility so that you, they can change themselves. So a powerful opportunity in supplier collaboration. Um, there are opportunities as well, but uh, a very good question uh, from your side, uh, uh, Samir. I, I hope I was able to answer. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Manchu? Yes, hello, sir. My question is also related to carbon footprint. Being a carbon neutral is now one of the novel trends. And logistic industry, we also know the logistic industry is one of the major contributors to greenhouse gases. And we can also agree that most of the so called green solutions, which currently uh, we, we are providing, have huge upfront cost. I would like to know is there any way 
which uh, without affecting much of our finances can reduce the carbon footprint of uh, companies which are in the logistic industry again a fantastic question himanshu i may not have 100% answer to that but i can tell you one thing this is something which we also talk about correct we can ignore it that okay now it is a investment it is a cost it is an investment it is a cost but you are not going to go long on this i mean they have to invest at some point in time we have to collaborate at some point in time the way we look at it the way i look at it personally is uh, it will be an investment in the initial phases correct there has to be an investment for anything which is coming in new as an investment and once you invest it you will have the return on investment because the industry will change the your customers will change the whole the complete ecosystem will change and you need to give that time for that holistic uh, ecosystem that's where the transformation you're coming through this automobile uh, which was more of uh, the uh, if i talk about the transmissions or maybe the powertrain engines it's going to be a shift from this to this this way correct and that's going to add investment everywhere whether it is in manufacturing whether it is in the uh, holistic uh, infrastructure side of it and at the same time if you get into this kind of thought process it will have some investment and that investment is going to uh, have challenges for sure because you need to plan it but once we do that after 4 years or 5 years we'll be coming back to the normal where it will be more of uh, the right practice so again strategically uh, it's a strategic question and every industry looks into this and for us also there are many things uh, that's what i can share you at this point and but very good question i'm answer thank you so much yes any more i think we are done with the question and i thought perfect perfect always and then again i uh, so as you guys conclude at the same time i just want to share uh, my insights once again so whatever i have share, shared is more of my learning and i'm sure that you guys uh, know a lot of things better than me as well because you have been to industry you have been into uh, institute and you get that uh, unique opportunity to collaborate uh, in that institute that a fantastic institute which i can see at the background uh, because that actually gives me that right uh, i would say that it also gives me goosebumps in terms of us are sitting at the right time the next 10 20 years are going to be really uh, effective uh, plan yourself uh, get into the right opportunities you can do wonders you can do wonders in this changing uh, trends because the next 20 years is going to be really exciting and i wish you all the best uh, folks and you will be doing really good things in your your career so thank you very much to the entire team Thank it you, was indeed a very insightful sir. session, you, and we have hosted we have a host of takeaways obtained from this same. Sir talked about the company and intelligent power management. He explained about the change in the supply chain and factors supporting the same. Then he elucidated about the external and internal challenges faced and importance of the internal skills. And he concluded with the important takeaways regarding the supply chain. We also got to know from sir a handful of real life examples, making the session more practical and relatable. on behalf of the entire fraternity of iit kanpur we would like to wholeheartedly thank you uma khan sir for taking out time from his busy schedule on a weekend to share his experience with us as a token of gratitude we have planted a sapling at the sundarban national park on your behalf the certificate of which we would be sharing with you very soon with this on behalf of the alumni and the corporate relations committee mba iit kanpur i would like to formally conclude the event once again thank you so much sir for your time Thank you very much. I wish I would be able to come yeah. down at some point in time and party back. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.